Salamat Siang, we have now seen the basic functionality of the two types of loops in MATLAB, for and while. In this video, we will compare the two and identify which coding situations call for one loop type over another. But first, we should learn a couple more commands that are important when working with loops, break and continue. If, in a loop, the break command is ever reached, it stops the operation of that loop immediately. If the continue command is reached, then the loop is short-circuited, meaning that the current iteration is stopped, but then we return back to the top of the loop. These two examples show the same simple code, with the only difference being the break or the continue statement within the if branch. Typically, you will see these commands within branches because we only want them to be evaluated under certain conditions. In the top example, ii will equal 1, the if condition is false, so then the sentence is printed and the loop returns to the top. Then ii equals 2, the next sentence is written and the loop returns to the top. Now for the key moment. ii equals 3, so the if condition is true and now the break command is processed. This terminates the loop entirely and we jump down past the end statement to process this final display command. The result of this code, as seen in the command window, looks like this. ii never gets to take on the values of 4 or 5. In the bottom example, the first two iterations work the same way. Then, when ii equals 3, the if condition is true and the continue statement is processed. This skips the sentence printing and jumps back to the top. Now, ii takes on the value 4 and the loop continues running. The result of this code is shown here. Notice that the sentence is printed for all of the numbers except when ii equals 3. Now let's reflect on the differences between for and while loops. The simple rule of thumb for deciding which loop to use is this. Ask yourself, do I know beforehand how many times I need to go through the loop? If the answer is yes, use a for loop. If the answer is no, use a while loop. Remember that a while loop continues running as long as the condition is true. This could require zero iterations, one iteration, two, three, 29, or any number of iterations. What differences exist in the tracking tables that we have been using? First, on the right side of the while table, there is a note requesting that we check the condition after each row. This doesn't exist for the for table. Next, the leftmost column differs. With the while loop, this column keeping track of the step number is present. This is not an actual variable in the code, it simply helps us organize. With the for loop, the left column is named index variable, which is an actual variable in the code, and it takes on predetermined values that can be filled in immediately. Can these loop types be used to accomplish the same thing? Yes, they can, but usually one type is more efficient for a certain situation. On this slide, we see an example where the for loop is more efficient. We have studied this for loop example before. We know that for each iteration, AA will take on a different number from 1 to 5, and then product will be multiplied by this value each time. This is one way we could accomplish the same thing with a while loop. Here, we manually increment AA each time through the loop, and then we use this condition to check if AA is not bigger than 5. This is less efficient to type and for the computer to process. How could we know when writing the code to use the more efficient for loop? Think about the overall purpose. We know we want AA to take on the values 1 through 5. Our rule of thumb states that if we know the number of iterations beforehand, we should use a for loop. Let's flip the script in this example to see a case where the while loop is more efficient. Here, BB starts at the value 2. Then we double its value repeatedly until BB gets larger than 25. In this case, BB will take on the values 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and then stop there. In the for loop, we see a clunky attempt to replicate this process. First, I have this index variable arbitrarily run through a large range of values. Will end ever reach 1 million? Not for this example, but I couldn't know that beforehand. 
So I'm forced to make this a large number in the hopes, but not the guarantee, that this is enough iterations. Then within the loop, I use this if statement to establish the exit condition. Once BB reaches 25 or above, then the break command is processed. Again, we see that choosing the wrong loop type can accomplish the same goal, but in a less efficient manner. How could we know that the while loop is better in this situation? Well, did we know beforehand how many iterations would be run? No, we did not, so the while loop is the better option. A corollary to this rule of thumb is to ask, is there a specific condition that should tell the loop to stop? If the answer to that is yes, then use a while loop because it has condition checking baked directly into the syntax.